I was young, milk was the indisputable food. One of the few foods you can never have too much of. Well, I drank my fair share of it. I drank tons. I drank enough for my whole family and then some. Didn't we all? Milk, milk, got the kick that gives you more. Help kick, more nutrition in every pore. Help kick, I'm moving to the rhythm of a brand new day. Cause the vitamins and milk help me on my way. Kick, so get on a help kick, let it pour. America's favorite help kick. Everyone agreed that milk was good for you. I was never told to slow down, never told I was having too much. It was liquid food. It satisfied thirst and hunger at the same time. What other foods can do that? Milk made you grow tall. Milk helped your bones grow strong. But as I grew older, my mother started having second thoughts about that. Soon enough, she started telling me to stop all dairy products when I was sick with a cold or an ear infection. I thought that was the weirdest thing I had ever heard. Shouldn't I be drinking more milk when I'm sick? I have forever wanted to know the truth about milk. Some people love to love it. Some people love to hate it. Some people can't even believe we're talking about it. Surely it can't be so complicated to uncover the truth. Is it good or not? Ladies and gentlemen, in preparation for landing, please store your bag addendums in front of you. Later articles may be placed in the overhead bins. It turns out there are a number of people out there that have something to say about milk. One of the most vocal is Robert Cohen. Back in the 90s, he wrote a book called Milk, the Deadly Poison, which caused quite a stir and got him all over the media. Money is spent by the dairy industry. If you're a doctor, you call their toll-free number, 800-Y-MILK, they'll send you $200 worth of free information. You call my toll-free number, 888-NOT-MILK, you'll get the truth. We're getting the message out as one voice to America Milk does not do the body good. Robert Cohen, you wrote a book called Milk, the Deadly Poison. How dare you? When I wrote the book, I didn't know. I didn't know how bad it really was. It's a, it's now I've learned. It would have been a stronger title. Milk is the most consumed product on the planet Earth. It consists of pus with hormones and glue. It's very tasty. It um, kills us before our time. And it's something we use to control the 177 herd. million cases of foodborne illness every year, according to our Centers of Disease Control. And 40% of the average diet, 666 pounds, is milk and dairy. That's what does it. But what, so what are you drinking here? What's this milk that you're drinking? Uh, this milk is a special kind of milk called soy milk. It comes from a bean. It's a soy chai which means that it's made with the spices of cardamom, ginger, cinnamon, clove, a little bit of pepper, so and it's a okay. wonderful drink. Yeah, it's great. Isn't it okay? You're drinking it. It's not bad. It's not bad, actually. You want to go get a glass of milk for yourself? I just may. You just may? Would you be okay with that? I would be fine with it as long as you feel like drinking the pus and the hormones and the glue. We find Neil Barnard. Now is the time to get on the track to a slimmer body, a healthier body, a physician and clinical researcher with the George Washington School of Medicine in Washington, D.C. Milk is the perfect food if you happen to be a little baby calf. And other than that, it's really quite unnecessary. Published in many leading scientific journals and is also the president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, which conducts research on preventive medicine, more particularly, good nutrition. There is some nutrition in milk. There's calcium in milk, for example. The problem is that everything that goes along with it is something that you can get in a much healthier form somewhere else. My research team used a low-fat vegan diet for people with diabetes, and what we found is it's terrific. The medical establishment's view on milk really is changing. Up until fairly recently, people would say it's the perfect food. 
it's got calcium, it has protein, it has fats and, and so forth. But starting a couple of decades ago, people started to become concerned. Number one, uh, the milk sugar causes digestive problems. But it was much more than that. The milk fat turns out to be a kind of fat that may raise cholesterol and may cause other kinds of problems. Uh, there's even been some new research showing links with prostate cancer. So the view on, on milk really has changed from very positive to now one of, of real caution. Your best food investment that means health and strength. Milk, all fresh, all pure, all energizing, and all good. Triple goodness, thanks to modern dairies and old bosses. Historically, people have hoped that milk would prevent osteoporosis. After all, it has calcium in it. But when you do the studies and you actually look over the years, people who drink the most milk have either no protection at all from fractures, or they may even have more fractures than other people. The reason seems to be that that little bit of calcium is not enough to make a difference. And the protein that's in milk, some of the other factors like sodium in milk, may actually be harmful. Best case scenario, milk is not helping against osteoporosis. Some evidence suggests it might even be harmful. You know, many people will say, well, let's make milk healthier. Let's take all that fat out and have non-fat milk. And you know what? That's a good move. And you can make it healthier still by taking out those proteins that tend to trigger allergies, migraines for some people. And then you could take the hormones out, remove all of that, and pretty soon you know what you're going to be left with? A glass of water. And maybe that's what we really should be drinking. As it turns out, Dr. Barnard is not the only researcher to raise concerns about the effects of milk on our health. I came from a dairy farm, milk cows. So I thought cow's milk is the best thing going. I thought the good old American diet, high in fat, high in protein, and so forth, was a lot of meat. I always thought that was the best there is. So my research in the early days was kind of focused on that. In fact, my doctoral dissertation was focused on the question of how do we produce animal protein more effectively? Dr. Campbell has been at the forefront of nutrition research for the last 40 years. He is the Jacob Gould Sherman Professor Emeritus of Nutritional Biochemistry at Cornell University and has also taught at Oxford in England. He wrote a controversial book called The China Study, which tells the story of his research project on nutrition that took over 20 years of his life. The study has been touted as the most comprehensive study of health and nutrition ever conducted. We focused on this question, does protein really increase liver cancer? Incidentally, liver cancer in animals is a good model to study cancer in general. We can learn a lot of things that way. So we wanted to know, is it really true? Because that, that was really odd. So we did lots of research for the next 27 years on that project alone and published at least 50 papers in professional journals. We got it peer-reviewed many, many times over. What we found was that we could turn on cancer growth by giving more protein and turn it off by taking, you know, decreasing the protein. Increasing the protein turns it on, decreasing it turns it off. Then we did lots of studies, biochemical studies, clinical studies and things like that, and these animals understand, you know, how does this work? And we found every time we look for an explanatory mechanism, which enzyme, which hormone, which this, which that, every time we look for an explanatory mechanism, we found one. What turned out to be a really important observation because that tends to upset the apple cart for what Western medicine is all about. You know, there's something else going on here. So the effects were with the protein was dramatic, and the protein that we tested that was doing this was casein. Casein is the main protein of cow's milk. I am come from the dairy farm. Early part of my career, I'm saying, hey, we've got to have more animal protein. And here, one of the most important proteins of all in the minds of most people, cow's milk protein, was turning on cancer. I said, whoa, this is, this is a bit much. But we studied it so thoroughly in so many ways, got it published and so forth. I had colleagues review it and, and all of that. And I, I mean, I, I dare anyone to try it. 
it works. It's really dramatic. And the protein level that required to turn on cancer is the protein that's fed in excess of the amount we need. Protein is an important nutrient. We need protein, absolutely need protein. But we only need so much. Most of us consume in excess of that. So it's the amount in excess that turns on cancer. The key to disease is animal protein. 25 years ago, the average North American ate 10 pounds of cheese per year. Today, it's 34 pounds. It takes 10 pounds of milk to make a pound of cheese. Is it all in the milk, really? I mean, it It's all in the milk. Even though we have more studies than ever showing that milk and dairy products can be linked to certain disease conditions, the, the market is going in exactly the opposite direction. People are consuming more cheese, for example, than ever before. Yogurt is arriving and people are thinking this must be healthy, but it really isn't. Um, and I just looked at the figures. About a century ago, the average North American consumed less than four pounds of cheese per year. Today, we're over about 33 pounds. I'm talking about one person in the course of a year. And that's pizza, the cheese that's on burgers and so forth, and it fattens us up and it makes us unhealthy. When we look at the food guidance diagrams that have evolved over the decades, um, milk has had sort of a special place, including its own food group. And there's really no reason for that. And, and when you ask people why that is, they'll say, well, it has calcium, and so people should consume it for calcium. The fact is there are plenty of other calcium-containing foods, and I, frankly, I think we should have kicked out the milk group a long time ago. When I testified, I was one of 27 Americans to testify before the Food Pyramid Committee, and Dr. Eileen Kennedy, who is an undersecretary of USDA, instructed the 27 of us to let USDA know who we were, the name of our organization, and who finances us. So my turn came and I said, Dr. Kennedy, my name is Robert Cohen. I'm with the Dairy Education Board. We have a shoestring budget. I pay for my own shoestrings. But then I pointed to her in front of TV cameras and I said, the American people want to know who finances you. And I heard gasps in the audience. Ooh, what is he saying? Because I've researched you. You're on the board of directors of the Dan and Yogurt Research Foundation. And I went down the line. Dr. Garza on that committee gets $500,000 a year from the United States Department of Agriculture to promote milk at Cornell University's agricultural research program. And up and down the line, Shirley Watkins, name after name at USDA worked for the dairy industry. So it, it, it came as a shock when I researched and found out these dirty little secrets, but it's all about cash flow. Money, money. It's all about money. The, the, the fundamental, you know, beyond any of the new discussions of nutrition, dairy generates tremendous cash flow on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So money blurs the truth. It wouldn't be the first time I hear that. We've got uh, two lobbyists, two attorneys, and a board of directors that represents about 900 dairy producers and companies that support the dairy industry. Their mission is to have a seat at the table when it comes to regulatory issues, and then also to work with uh, politicians and try to get the right people elected. I found Richard Nixon in the White House, our great president, who said the most famous quotation out of the White House in his administration, I am not a crook. Was he a crook? I ask people, was he a crook? Because I filed a Freedom of Information Act request for March 23rd, 1971, when he's visited by three members of the dairy industry holding each a duffel bag filled with a million cash. He got three million cash on that day. The next day, at a session of his cabinet, he arbitrarily raised the price of milk. It wasn't even an issue, 17 cents per 100 pounds, which turned out to be a $300 million price increase. One week earlier, the Secretary of Agriculture, Clifford Hardin, said there'd be no increase in the price of milk that year because of the enormous surplus. So Nixon took a three million bribe to give the dairy industry a 300 million cash increase. President after president has done the same thing. So another industry tinted with corruption. It isn't the first time I hear that either. But the disagreement and controversy continue. I think we could trace back some of the controversy in dairy 
to the late 80s when Monsanto Corporation was developing their synthetic cow growth hormone, which uh, a, bi a biotech hormone, which if injected into some cows would uh, create 10 or 15 pounds of more milk per day, so Monsanto claimed. In 1990, during the approval process for the genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, known as RBGH, or RBST, recombinant bovine somatotropin, I learned that Monsanto's laboratory animals, everyone got cancer from the study. The study was done in France for Suro Pharmaceuticals for Monsanto. It was a very famous 90-day study that I learned was a 180-day study. They call the second 90 days the reverse phase of the study, and during that phase, every animal got cancer. Well, the U.S. is allowed to give growth hormones to their cows in order to produce more milk. There's something in cow's milk called IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor. In test tube studies, it causes cancer cells to grow. Nobody wants to be drinking that. And they discovered that when you inject growth hormone into cows, it increases that IGF-1 in the milk. So organic farmers said, well, we won't use growth hormone. We won't use this at all. And that's a good move, except then it has turned out that what causes the IGF-1 in the human body is just drinking the milk. It's the protein and the sugars in the milk causing the IGF-1 to develop within your own body. And that's true if it's organic or not. Milk is a fraud. Everything's wrong. It looks disgusting to me. Migraines, arthritis. Scientific studies have not proven in the long run. I don't like people lying. I'm particularly concerned about children. Saturated fat. The wrong kind of fat. Just drinking the milk. 300 million cash increase in progesterone and prolactin and melatonin. Cholesterol, prostate cancer. Gastrointestinal peptides, hypothalamic hormones. We don't drink pig milk. We don't drink dog milk. Kids are more obese today than they've ever been before. The good old American diet. We don't drink elephant milk. Somehow we delight in the thought of drinking this big 2,000 pound beast that has feces on its underside. That's the milk we enjoy and we think it's wholesome. And it's not. Milk, is, uh, as far as a food is concerned, it may be our biggest problem we have to face in the future. Some people advocate raw milk. And frankly, I think you have to live in a country that has really good health insurance in order for you to want to do that. Um, it's a product that comes out with traces of bacteria in it, some of which can be deadly. And the idea of consuming that, I think, is something no one should contemplate. It's dangerous. It's really dangerous because, you know, one of the reasons it got pasteurized is because of the organisms that it can carry and can cause problems. And at some point, you have to just say, wait a minute. This is a cow. And the milk was produced for the cow's baby to help that baby grow very rapidly. And after the age of weaning, even the calf doesn't consume milk anymore. So this product in humans is linked to just as many health problems as the commercial milk is linked to. If milk was the last food left on Earth, um, I would probably be one of the first to go because I wouldn't be eating it. And I can't imagine a world because the cow wouldn't survive if all that was left was milk because cows don't drink it. How do they get the calcium if they don't drink milk? Boy, it just beats me. They eat grass, they eat green things, and, and that's what I would do. Traces of bacteria in it, some of which can be deadly. It's dangerous. It's heart disease, and the asthma, and the diabetes. That body of research is overwhelming. Well, the information on milk over the years has been a serious distortion of the facts. 